it could save them from getting derailed by some of the misleading arguments common in theological academia. Written for the serious Bible believer, PhD authors Don Batten and Jonathan Sarfati bring clarity to an issue that has plagued the church for over 100 years. All right, and this is the In the News section, mm -hmm. where we, uh, we'll just take a little break from uh, the 15 reasons to take Genesis as history and just look at what's, what's happened in the news recently, news reports that come out involving creation, evolution, and, and Christianity, that kind of thing. Right. So we've got an article here uh, that's from our website called uh, that, that we entitled "When Will Europe Wake Up?" Right. So a bit of a bit of a, an interesting title as <laughs> as we get started. The Council of Europe condemns creationism, but it ought to con reconsider where the threat to human and civic rights really is coming from. Mm -hmm. And that's the that's kind of the subtitle here. This is by Dr. Jonathan Sarfati and Dr. David Kachapool from our Australian office, and it begins this way: In June last year. And this is, uh, what's the date on this? This is, uh, must be referring to 07, right? Yeah. I think so. Yeah, I believe uh, it was. In 07. June last year, so that would be June 07, when the Council of Europe uh, Parliamentary Assembly called off a scheduled vote on a resolution banning creationism from school science classes, many creationists rejoiced. So this vote was, was, was canceled. Right. However, it turned out that the vote was only postponed, not canceled. The Parliament later, in October, passed the resolution by 48 votes to 25, declaring, this is a quote, if we are not careful, creationism could become a threat to human rights. And our, 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 the article continues here. It's quite a lengthy article. Mm. What, an incredible, what an incredibly naive statement, given that the only rights that humans can ever genuinely claim are those bestowed by the Creator. But for those who deny a creator any perceived rights can only be those resulting from a temporary consensus in the midst of ever shifting an ever shifting base of human opinion. I think that's a great point. You know, when, when we're talking about rights, who who gave us those rights? Yeah, uh, how, do, how do we get those rights? Does society uh, determine where your rights come from? Because if society does, then you're gonna look at of course extreme examples like Hitler's Germany. Well, who who decides whose rights? Like who ultimately gets to decide Whose rights are, are you know? I mean, and that's a—it's a very, very complex question. If you're thinking from an evolutionary perspective, right. that that all humans evolve from prior creatures, and there's no God, uh, there, there's no one who sets what's absolute right and absolute wrong, right. and, and and those those standards of right and wrong are fluid, and, and we can reinterpret what's right and wrong, and so on. Yeah. Th then who determines, as you, as you put it, who determines the rights? That individuals have. I think many people have this idea of creationists. That, you know, they're they're just I don't know Bible bashers, or they're unintelligent, or they're not really you know. Thinking. <laughs> I mean, I think if you're you're actually honest, the most people that I talk to that are honest, even if they don't take our position, when they look at our arguments, they go, you know what, you guys have good arguments. I'm not talking about the people that just you know slam creationists. Right, and stuff. right. They go, yes. They go, wow, you guys really have legitimate reasons for your faith. They're, they're logical anyway, right? right? They're logical, and we're not trying to jam it down somebody's throat. We're saying, hey, let's have the discussion open, and, and shouldn't a student in a school be able to ask some questions? I mean, you wouldn't think so in Canada, in, in for example, British Columbia. Right. It's the first province in Canada where they've banned. If you're a teacher and you, you, you mention creation or intelligent design, you're fired. Yeah, you're, you're, you're out of there. Sounds like Europe is, is going the same route. <laughs> And look hey, at this. we were first in Canada. Is that something to be proud of or ashamed of? I'm pretty ashamed of it, to be honest. Yeah. But uh, you know, when we look back in the, this evolution creation debate, you know, the Scopes trial. You know, many people have seen in, right. in, in inherit the wind, in, and it's, in it's the basically US, a yeah. Christian, an anti-Christian propaganda film because they distort what actually happened there to a certain right. degree. Right? We used to carry. I remember. Uh, we don't do that anymore. But we used to carry the actual hardbound transcript right. of the entire trial. Right. Now, why would if it's if, if it's anything like Inherit the Wind? Why would a creationist organization carry that? Well, exactly. it's we, nothing like Inherit the Wind. We want to expose the truth. And really, look at it, what, what happened. They were saying, back then, the evolutionists were saying, well, you're teaching creationism. Let's at least have another model we can go by. Now it's totally slipped. And if you even try to mention creation or, or intelligent designs, a lot of times you're, you're just... You're in danger of, of ridicule and losing right. your job. Well, here's another article I, I thought that was great. Um, this is from... Uh, the news found, uh, Newshounds Forum, and it's talking about uh, they found a Jurassic beaver. This is in NewScientist.com, and in this news service, picked picked this Jurassic, up. Jurassic. Okay, now the Jurassic. Uh, just to explain, 
there, there's different layers of rock, and those are date. They're, they're mentioned. Uh, uh, they're given different names. The Jurassic right. rock is supposed to be dinosaur age rock. Right. Right. So right. We got a Jurassic. What was it? A beaver? Beaver. Jurassic. So this is supposedly a 164 Jurassic. million year old beaver, and, and this set me off on a search. I was like, well, that's pretty cool. You know, <laughs> when I was you know studying. Um, evolution in school I was taught that you know there was a certain number of creatures that lived at certain time periods and then they died out and then you got another time period and then well, another they evolved into new ones right and, yes. and, and these yeah. didn't overlap right you didn't have beavers living at the time of dinosaurs now I'm being honest evolutionists have changed what they were taught but I find that this information I'm going to share with people now really shocks them when they when they say what evolutionists are admitting so for example here was one uh, from the BBC. The title of the article was Cretaceous Duck Ruffles Feathers. Well, I bet it did ruffle some feathers because they found a, a, a duck-like creature, and that's what they always say, and it was in the same level as a 70 million year old dinosaur. Okay. So, you know, when you were taught that, that evolutionary paradigm, you know, think about it. Did you picture a T Rex, you know, rawr, and then quack, 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 quack? quack. <laughs> <laughs> you know, most people go, wow. So I, I kept looking, and, and then I found another one. Now, this is a different duck-like creature. Dinosaur-era birds surprisingly duck-like fossil suggests. But this one, however, was supposedly 110 million years old because they found it where they found it in the strata. Okay, yes. So here's a duck that's been a duck for another, you know, 40 they're, million they're, years. They're, they're, they're resistant to calling it a duck, aren't they? Right. A it's duck-like, duck -like, duck -like, right? even though it's got the same features, uh, strikingly similar to today's birds, considering they lived alongside dinosaurs, this type of thing. They're, they always try to put the caveats in. Look what it says. Because the bones were buried gently and slowly in mud, many of them remain uncrushed. <laughs> <laughs> See, you can't create a fossil slowly and gently. You got to bury the thing rapidly, right? But right. but the point is, soft tissues were also preserved, including flight feathers and the webbing, like a duck's between the bird's toes. 110 million years old, and you've got webbing preserved in the fossil. That amazing, right? And then this is the most amazing admission in the in the article. It said it may have looked like a duck and acted like a duck, but Gansus, what they called it, was no duck. So. Well, I, I'm sorry, but farmer logic says if it looks like a duck, quacks like a duck, it's a duck. <laughs> okay, of course. Yeah, but it can't be a why? Why can't it be a duck to, to the folks at uh, at National Geographic News? Well, because you know it, it existed with the dinosaurs, and, and of course there must have been some evolutionary change. Now it looks just like a duck. But it can't be because our beloved evolution theory says ducks haven't evolved yet. Right. So, uh, so picture it now, folks. You got ducks. What else do you got? I found this one. This is a Nature magazine. It was a Mesozoic squirrel. A 70 million year old squirrel. Flying squirrel. Well, flying squirrels okay. exist today, right? We got ducks. What else? Here's the Jurassic beaver. So here's your 164 million year old beaver. Here was a dinosaur killer. They found this, this you know, um, a mammal, and it had eaten the Psittacosaurus. Wow, that's pretty neat. It's, it, it's eaten a dinosaur. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> and, and, and they called it a Repinomammus robustus. Well, that looks exactly like a modern day honey badger. So think about it, folks. Here, you can badgers look, eating dinosaurs. Yeah, you can look at the graphic there, and you got T. Rex. He's pretty puzzled. You got beavers, ducks, all sorts of things coexisting at the same time. Kind of a shocker for what we were taught in school. That's right. Some people believe that aliens from distant planets may hold the key to understanding the mysteries of life. However, belief in life in outer space is rooted in belief in the theory of evolution. A popular pro-ET website says, over the last half century, scientists have developed a theory of cosmic evolution that predicts that life is a natural phenomenon likely to develop on planets with suitable environmental conditions. In other words, if it happened here, it must have happened elsewhere. But repeatable science shows evolution didn't happen here. There is a message from a higher intelligence that tells us the real solution to life's mysteries. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. The Age of the Earth Many people think that the Earth is billions of years old. But in this DVD presentation, geologist Dr. Taz Walker shows that the evidence actually fits best with the biblical record of history. Don't modern dating methods prove an ancient earth? Don't the facts from geology prove it? Dr. Walker challenges us. 
How can we truly know the age of the Earth? He shows why there's only one reliable way to know the age of anything. Find out how in this illustrated presentation. Okay, so 15 reasons to take Genesis is real history, and we're up to number 11. And number 11 says, the church fathers accepted the young earth historical time frame and global flood of Genesis. Now this isn't, uh, I guess, proof of anything, but it, it, it's, it's certainly what we need to look at this. What did the church fathers understand from the scripture? Because if, if ideas about how to interpret the scripture changed at roughly the same time as long ages and Darwinian evolution was promoted, then it, it starts to get a little fishy, right? Right, right, right? right. Oh, well, why did everybody's opinion change? Is that what the scripture says, plainly, or is it... Yes, if Christians right. come up with a, with a fancy new interpretation of scripture today that the church fathers and, and people living for the last 2,000 years have somehow missed, that's a good indication that your interpretation is, is flawed. Based on enough. outside evidence that, yeah, exactly. So, so let's look at this. I've, I've just made some notes. Um, for example, Basil the Great, AD 327 to 379, he actually did a series of sermons on Genesis uh, called the Hexameron, and he argued for six literal days, and, and instantaneous creation by God of, of animals, plants, and, and the people, Okay. and uh, that all animals originally ate plants, as in Genesis 1, 29, and 30. Now, we've brought this up before. You know, if, if all animals are eating plants in the beginning, and all people too, that's what Genesis 1, 29, and 30 says, well, the fossil record contains animals eating each other. Right? right, you've got foss, one animal's Carnivorous tearing apart activity. another yeah. stuff like that, and so it just doesn't make sense. If the fossil record was laid down before Adam sinned, if the millions of years are right, God's creation it was very good. You can picture Adam and Eve taking a stroll, and you know, I don't know, some gazelle coming by and the lion grabbing it and ripping it to pieces. No, this is very good. <laughs> it's not consistent. Right, right. So again, um, he even argued against ideas of transformation in this series. See, most people think Darwinian evolution is, well, it's new. It's not new. The concept of one creature turning into another over whatever mechanisms uh, has been around for a long time. Uh, the the anti-theistic uh, philosophers like Anaximander, uh, Epinomides, and uh, Lucretius taught these ideas before Jesus' time. So Darwin just sort of popularized a specific type of evolution and gave it names like right. natural selection. He brought natural selection into it. Yeah. Right. Um, now, some people have misconstrued the, the church father's position um, because although they believed in six literal days and God resting on the seventh, they then thought that it was kind of a metaphor for how, what the length of time the planet Earth would exist, 7,000 years. Right, okay. Right? But that's, yep. that's a different topic, actually. Uh, they still believe in the six-day creation. Uh, yeah, they just the then, Bible was real history. And right. Certainly. Yeah. Right. And uh, then some, um, some cite Augustine and Origen, and they were of the Alexandrian school, so they looked at things a little more m metaphorically, I guess you could say. Because these guys, instead of believing in millions of years, they believe that God created everything in one day. Like, just boom, basically instantaneously. They were actually arguing the other way. And so some long agers have quoted them saying, see, they didn't take it as literal. But yeah, but they were going in the they're wrong are, direction. They're arguing the other direction. <laughs> yes, because God created in six days and rested on the seventh as a sample of our work week. It, it, it was for us that he created that way. He could right. have created instantaneously, but, but anyway. So let's move on to um, number 12. Number here. 12, the reformers understood it as history. The great reformers and, and Martin Luther and so on. We've got, uh, let's see what he says. Here's um, Actually, this is, uh, John this Calvin. is Calvin. Yeah. Um, and uh, he says, God himself took the space of six days for the purpose of accommodating his works to the capacity of men. That's just what we were mentioning. God created in six days, rested on the seventh, as an example of a work week. Pattern for the work week, yes. Right. Yep. And then, uh, again, we mentioned Luther as well. Uh, or, or Calvin continues here. <laughs> a little more than 5,000 years have passed since the creation of the universe. Okay, so he's, he, he, he's talking about the, 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 the creation week, God accommodating that to for our purposes here, the creation week, and right. he obviously believes in a young earth. Right. A little more than 5,000 years have passed. Right. John Calvin. Yeah. Now, we have Martin, uh, now we have Luther, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, here we go. Okay. He, referring to Moses, calls a spade a spade. He employs the terms day and evening without allegory, just as we customarily do. Right. We, assert, we assert that Moses spoke in the literal sense, not allegorically or figuratively. Right. And, he, and he continues that the world with all its creatures was created within six days as the word as the words read 
If we do not comprehend the reason for this, let us remain pupils and leave the job of teacher to the Holy Spirit.